Our life uh, before these bills was nice and calm and peaceful. You know, we were just leading our lives just like any other family. Thank you for doing all this work today. I know it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of you. That's been transformed in many ways now, um, in ways that often feel scary and dangerous. These bills directly impact my family in that they specifically seek to put my husband and I in jail and take my children out of our custody and put them in a broken foster care system because we have a transgender child. It's a constant conversation among our family about moving out of Texas because pretty obviously these bills represent a, a, a clear and present danger to the integrity and safety of our family. In many ways, we're just a kind of typical family. Our kids like sports and music and hanging out. We play Nintendo Switch together, and we like to have family meals. Everything related to this dinner. <laughs> and about family. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah. You can't do that. You can't, you can't copy somebody. I can. My favorite thing, as you know, is always family dinner time. I already said that. <laughs> it's always family da, 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 dinner time. We've been Love very it. well loved and accepted in our community. When our son came out as transgender in first grade, people were just like so happy that he could be himself, his whole self, and they were fully on board wanting to support him and support us. And now, eight, nine years later, here we are suing the governor of Texas and fighting for his life. So those who just walked in uh, since the last time I was here, we're here to write postcards. I have eight pages of banned bills totaling 139 that have been filed in the Texas legislature. You can refer to this if you want to write about one bill in particular or just write about all the bills. When you're done, um, just hand them either to me or to Gordy. We're both going to be down in Austin on uh, Monday for a big lobby day. We will hand deliver these to legislators. So write as many postcards as you want. Anyone have any postcards you want me to grab from you? Yeah. Do you need do you need like art supplies? Yeah. You need art supplies. Oh my gosh, yeah. We're probably gonna leave. I'm aiming for six, but I'm thinking seven would be fine because it's gonna it'll take three and a half hours to get down there. Yeah. Lunch is at eleven. Eleven. And, and then the rally is at twelve. And then the legislators. And yeah, and that's it. And so like we're just gonna do as much as we can and then when the kids have hit a wall, we're done. We're out of there. I think it's important for people to know that these bills don't have to pass in order for them to do harm. In 2021, the bills that my family fought the hardest against were the ones that would have labeled us as child abusers because we have a, a transgender child. That bill fortunately did not pass in 2021, and yet everything in that bill happened anyway. Well, I think those are the right words. Amber and I had somebody call in on us, and we were put under investigation on the allegation of child abuse simply for raising a trans child. That was such an enormously traumatic experience for our family that was all consuming. You know, it's not a coincidence that the investigation against our family and others in the state happened right when there was a fierce primary runoff. So this is pure politics for them. But for us, it's our life. This we're going to hand to the legislators with uh, a letter that we wrote asking them to vote against all the anti-trans stuff. Just pictures just to try to humanize the people that they're attacking, you know. We're just going to go and do as much good as we possibly can with the time that we have. I don't really know what that's going to look like yet, but we'll do our best. You guys ready? Okay. Where's... Good girl, Blue Val. I forgot to make my smoothie. That's what I forgot. So we're going to uh, Austin, our state capital, for uh, a day of advocacy and lobbying with our state lawmakers. My hope, number one, is to make sure the kids don't have a total meltdown because <laughs> it's going to be a long day. 
Number two, that we connect with some supporters uh, in the legislature because there are good folks and we just let them know how important this is to us that they stand up for us. And number three, we want to get the message across to the people attacking us that they need to knock it off and that we're here if they really want to get the real story and not just uh, continue with the lies and fabrications that they're running with. And then fourth, uh, get some kolaches on the way home, I think. <laughs> Oh, these are the um, committee chairs from the, um, the House Public Health Committee. They're going to hear a lot of the bills about gender affirming care. So I want to make sure that they hear from me. I think literally every trans inclusive family I know in the state of Texas has considered leaving Texas. Many of them have, but that doesn't mean that everyone's going to act on it. Not everyone can act on it. My son has grown up in this community and feels safe and supported here. And we're just supposed to take him out of his entire support network and drop him in a blue state and hope that that school district is supportive because that's not always a guarantee. Kids, we're gonna leave our water bottles in the car because it's gonna be a long day. Um, and I don't want us like to have to carry too much stuff. We have to show up for the next 50 something days of this legislative session right now. And we have to make sure that we have our voices heard in a way that they understand that we are here and we are not going anywhere. And we demand to be treated not special. We demand to be treated just like everyone else. We need this support, you know, we need this love and support from each other. Because once you walk in there, it's like you're walking into the lion's den, you know? Kids? We're on the movie, and we're going to go down and down, and probably down one more. You can say, we are a trans-inclusive family, and we oppose any bills that hurt trans kids. Here's a packet of more information. Do you want to practice? OK. How can I help you? <laughs> we'll work on that. We know there's a lot of anti-LGBTQ bills, specifically there's 139 that have been filed in the legislature, and we are here just to voice our opposition to all of those bills because, you know, we voted for Senator Springer. We hope that he will in turn vote for us to protect us and keep my kids safe. Yeah, give me one second. Yeah. <laughs> are we done? So. We're good? I'm trying to reach that, that movable middle, the vast majority of America that has not thought about this issue because they think it doesn't affect them, when really it, it absolutely affects them. Because if the state of Texas can come after my parental rights, right, a white, cisgender, middle-aged, property-owning, God-fearing woman married to a white, cisgender man, like, if they can come after my parental rights and threaten those parental rights, they're coming for you next if they haven't already. And so if we don't stop this now, it's only going to snowball and get worse and worse and worse, as we've seen 2017, 2019, 2021, now 2023, this legislative cycle is the worst I've ever seen. I've got one more legislative visit, then we're going to go get nachos. We feel like this is an issue of basic human understanding and, and empathy, that uh, if people could just get to know who we are and what our son likes to do, that if there was a real person there and not whatever sort of symbol or bogeyman you've created in your mind that we could dispel that myth and misinformation with a, a real person who's thriving in life. So who made this a tradition exactly? It just is. It just, no, it is. It's just a Texas tradition. When you go to Austin, you stop by the, go to the check stop. I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. They just have to do it. I'd like people to know that, that my family in so many ways is, is like other families. We've got school, work, 
we're not getting enough sleep, right? We have to get up and make breakfast and get to work and, and do all the things. We're just looking to lead our lives just like anybody else. I'd like them to know that, that I've got two kids who are just as full of, of dreams and silliness as their kids and that they've got a bright future ahead of them if people just speak up for their basic human rights.